for a quickie. I don't do quickies, ask Andrea. Anyway, good evening, gentlemen. I don't know who's on. I'm just leaving. And um, hopefully, it'll be a good run home tonight. Can't be any worse than it's been the last few nights. Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now I know I don't show many radios like this or do proper ready-made radio reviews. However, every now and again I come across a product which I think is worth mentioning. This radio is made by QYT and its model number, as far as the packaging says, is called a KT-WP12. Although their website states this product is actually called a KT-9900. To make things a little bit more confusing, this radio is also sold as an NESECU WP-9900. Now I'll talk more about that later in the video. So as you could see at the start of this video, the speaker microphone itself has the display built in. There's no display on the main unit itself and actually it doesn't need one because all of the features are controlled directly from the speaker mic. Now, as well as the microphone and main unit being waterproof, this little radio boasts some quite nice little features. It has 200 memories available, which can be programmed via software. It covers from 136 to 174 megahertz, and then 400 to 480 megahertz. This means that you can easily program this radio for use on the two meter and 70 centimeter handbands, along with other popular frequencies like PMR on 446, which is used in the UK, FRS in the States and the Citizens Band UHF frequencies like in Australia and New Zealand. So in the box we do get the usual and expected accessories such as the mobile mounting kit with bracket, a manual and of course the power cable. Neatly though the power cable comes terminated with a car cigarette lighter plug making it nice and easy to install into a vehicle either permanently or temporarily. Now this radio is rated according to the specifications to have an output power of around 25 watts on VHF and then 20 watts on UHF. Now from my testing I saw around 21 watts on the 2 meter handband and around 16 watts on 70 centimeter handbands. For that particular test I connected the radio directly into a power meter which had a dummy load attached. Now one of the things I was concerned about when I ordered this radio was how good the audio quality was going to be coming from the speaker mic. Normally, hand mics like this with built-in speakers don't normally sound that great, but I was actually quite surprised. And if the clip at the start of this video was anything to go by, it sounds pretty adequate. Now, the main unit itself is made from metal, so it has a real nice solid feel. The antenna connection is an SO239 socket, and on the other side, we find a multi-pin microphone socket. Also, a little flap held in by two screws next to the microphone socket has an engraving titled The Data Hole. With my curiosity peaked, I removed the two screws to reveal a further two 3.5mm jack sockets. Now one of these is for an extension speaker and the other is for a programming cable to plug into. With mine that I got from Banggood, I did not receive a programming cable, but I did find a compatible cable for around £4 on Amazon. Now obviously with the data hole flap removed, the integrity of the waterproofness will be rendered useless. So if you're not using an external speaker, remember to refit the little flap after programming the radio. Yeah, Roger. Yeah, just uh just trying a little um a little QYT radio. It's extremely small this radio. Um, it's only putting out about 25 watts, so you probably won't be able to hear me as strong from where you are from me, but uh, I just thought I'd just give it a go and just uh, see see what it's like. It's quite intriguing. It has the display in the microphone, um, but uh, yeah, it's a shame it's not a bit more powerful, but yeah, 25 watts, I think it'd be like a little neat radio to stick in the car. Over. So if I pause the video here, let's take a closer brief look at the display and see what's actually going on. The microphone hole is located here, bottom right with the speaker just below it. Above this we have the illuminated keypad 
with a main menu button located on the top left of the keypad. Now the exit button on the bottom left of the keypad also doubles up as a button to switch between VFO mode and memory mode. On the display you will notice there are three VFOs. Now unfortunately you can only listen to one of these at a time but it makes it easy to switch between each of them. Now on the clip at the start of this video you would have noticed the top two VFOs were in memory mode and the bottom one was in frequency VFO mode. Also on the display, we have a bar graph at the bottom. This shows signal strength when receiving and power transmit level when transmitting. We also see a couple of other pieces of information on the right side, which show the current battery voltage and whether or not we have CTCSS turned on or off. Now at the top of the screen, we have the main readout, which shows what frequency is currently selected. Now when in memory mode, you're able to change this to show the memory name instead of a frequency. This is particularly useful if you have repeaters stored in with a name. Now on the very top line of the display, we can see some kind of signal meter. There's also an H, which indicates we're in high power mode, and the W, which is indicating I am in wide FM. Now after making this QSO, I realized I should have actually been in FM narrow, and if I was in FM narrow, it would be an N to show instead of a W. Now, as mentioned earlier, this radio can be programmed using software on your computer. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail here as the software is extremely easy to use. Now, assuming you have a programming cable and it's plugged into your computer and radio, the only setting you'll need to set before programming will be the radio's virtual COM port within the software. Now, this particular screen within the programming software is to change the optional features. Here you can change how the display looks by changing the colors of each of the lines of text. You can also pre-program features like squelch level, beep volume or turn it off, main volume, and even the power on welcome message. Now programming the memories is also fairly easy as each channel is entered into the spreadsheet style screen. Simply enter the RX and TX frequencies, choose between DCS or CTCSS if required, set the power level, change whether the memory is 12.5 or 25 gigahertz wide, and of course, give the memory a channel name. Now, there doesn't appear to be an export or import feature on this software, which is a shame as to create this file manually like this may take a while if you have a lot of frequencies you'd like to store. As mentioned before, I purchased this QYT KTWP12 from Banggood, and they shipped it to me via DHL at no extra charge. So if you're interested in purchasing one of these, I will leave a link in the video description below. However, if you're in the UK and do not want to order from outside of the country, then MoonmakerOnline.com sell this exact same radio, but under the AnySeku WP9900 product name. Well, the cost of this on Banggood is around 80 UK pounds or 100 US dollars, and the AnySeku available at Moonmaker and at the time of recording this video is around 99 UK pounds, but you do get a free programming cable with it. Well, there we go, guys. That's a brief overview of this pretty cool radio. I'm definitely going to be installing this one in my car. If you enjoyed this video or any of my other videos and you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. It does help out the channel. Until the next time, take care, stay safe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.